Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor, and you're listening to episode 128 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope everyone is doing great. Uh, I've had a rough week (laughs) because I was sick this week, and uh, I think in my last episode, um, my voice was very weak. Uh, This time, it's a little bit better uh, because I've had a couple more days <laughs> to recover, uh, but I'm still not at 100%, but I'm getting there. Hopefully in a couple days uh, I'll be back to normal, but uh, thank you all for your patience uh, with my sick voice, but uh, I don't think it's too bad, right? Uh, today in this episode, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. Uh, We also refer to this as AI. That's probably what I'm going to say throughout this episode. AI, artificial intelligence. This is a really relevant topic uh, in 2023 uh, at the time of recording this. Uh, A lot of people are talking about artificial intelligence more and more people uh, are starting to discuss this topic because um, every day uh, we are advancing more and more with artificial intelligence and the capabilities of AI. So I want to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the benefits the risks, and some examples of AI. So I'm sure you're all going to be interested in this topic. This is uh, one that's relevant uh, for most of us, I think. And before we get started, remember that if you feel ready to start practicing with real conversations between native speakers, then make sure to sign up for my U.S. Conversations podcast in which I talk to different people from around the country, and we have natural conversations, and we speak at normal speed, and you have the transcript with uh, definitions of different key words and phrases that we use. So if you're interested in that, make sure to go down and click on the link in the episode description below the episode. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. And if you don't feel ready for that yet, but you want to practice with my advanced episodes where it's just me speaking, uh, but fast at normal speed and with the transcript, then make sure to become a listening time family member and you'll get two new advanced episodes every month. The link is also in the description below this episode, that's patreon.com slash listening time. And if you like this podcast, please share it with anyone else you know who's learning English and give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about artificial intelligence, AI. So what is AI? AI refers to the development of computer systems to perform tasks and solve problems that normally require human intelligence. Okay, Uh, that's kind of a technical definition, but I think you get the point right? It's uh, kind of like developing robots with human capabilities in terms of their intelligence, right? So this is AI. So what are the benefits of artificial intelligence? Why do people uh, want this? Why are people excited about the development of AI? Well, One of the biggest advantages, the biggest benefits of using this technology is that it can improve 
efficiency. It can make certain processes、uh, vastly more efficient. When I use the adverb vastly, I'm saying largely,、uh, in a great way. Okay, so、uh, AI can really improve efficiency. It can、uh, make things much faster and easier、uh, than if a human had to do that task. And、uh, when it comes to Making decisions,、uh, AI can make really quick decisions, decide things, and act, and do things really fast, and we can save a lot of time. That's, of course, one of the biggest benefits of AI. It's really efficient. It saves us time, and it makes processes、uh, easier. Right. So that's a big benefit. Another benefit is the automation aspect of AI.、Uh, this is、uh, something that also、uh, improves efficiency.、Uh, so when I talk about automation, I'm referring to、uh, making tasks automated that used to be、uh, done by humans, so that a human doesn't need to do it. Uh, if you、uh, can use AI to、uh, generate an invoice、uh, when you make a sale, then、uh, you can、uh, just dedicate your time to doing something else, and that invoice gets generated automatically. <laughs> The AI does it, and you don't need to worry about that. You can do something else. Uh, that's more important. So that's really cool. By the way, what's an invoice? An invoice is a bill where you say、uh, what product、uh, or service was given and how much it cost. That's an invoice, right? So、uh, you can do things like automate the process of generating invoices or. Even writing emails and responding to、uh, customers or whatever, so that can really help people、uh, to just not need to、uh, spend their own energy on tasks that can be automated. So that's a cool benefit. Another benefit is data analysis. So AI is capable of Analyzing data、uh, really well and really fast. So when you have data, and this would、uh, take a long time for you to analyze and、uh, reach certain conclusions, and you might possibly make mistakes.、Uh, AI can probably help、uh, a lot in this regard. It can、uh, analyze this data. It has、uh, the capability of doing so、uh, in a way that we probably uh, can't uh, replicate. <laughs>、uh, we humans, right? So that's another benefit.、Uh, another benefit that I kind of just mentioned is AI can help reduce human error. So we're humans, and we make mistakes, and a lot of these mistakes、uh, can be avoided if an AI does the task instead of a person. So this can be a big benefit because uh, AI uh, often uh, does things perfectly or makes very few mistakes,、uh, and it can. Do things in a way that just reduces the overall number of errors. So, if being、uh, correct and not making mistakes is important in your task or your job or whatever you're doing, then this can be a big benefit for you because 
AI can reduce uh, these human errors. So that's another benefit. Before we continue, let me tell you about our sponsor, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you can get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. So you can skip going to the grocery store and instead use HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. The holidays are coming up and HelloFresh can take the stress out of cooking this season by delivering everything you need to prepare a delicious meal right to your door, which saves you tons of time. We all know that life can get chaotic around the holidays, and that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals come in. These quick fixes help you get a delicious, wholesome meal on the table faster than it takes to get delivery. My family has benefited from HelloFresh, not just because of how quick it makes everything, but also because of the variety of recipes that it offers. With over 45 weekly recipes to choose from, HelloFresh has given us plenty of tasty meals to enjoy. That's why HelloFresh is so great. In addition to being fast and easy, it also keeps your cooking and your food exciting. You can see why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash listening free and use code listening free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash listening free with code listening free. Another benefit is that AIs can act as assistants to us. It's kind of like having your own assistant right there with you. So when you need something, when you need some information, when you need help uh, solving something, your AI assistant is right there, ready to help you. So that's really cool. That's something that uh, a lot of us have never had before. We've never had an assistant who can do things for us, but AIs are now fulfilling that role for many people. So that's uh, another benefit. And one more is that AIs are always available, usually. So your normal human assistant um, is probably only available during certain hours of the day, but you can access your AI assistant 24-7. Uh, that phrase 24-7 refers to 24 hours, seven days a week. It just means always. So AIs are always available. You can get help from uh, this AI whenever you need it. That's something that uh, we can't replicate with just one person because people need to sleep. People aren't always working. Uh, but an AI doesn't need to sleep. <laughs> so this uh, assistant is always available to help you. So that's another really cool benefit. And I'm sure there are many other benefits uh, of AI, but I just discussed uh, a handful of them here. By the way, a handful refers to several. It just means uh, several of something, a handful of something. So those were some of the benefits, but there are also risks and concerns that people have uh, regarding AI. So what are some things that people are concerned about or afraid of when it comes to AIs? Well, maybe one of the biggest fears is that people think that AIs will eventually turn on humans. Uh, when we use the phrasal verb turn on in this context, we're saying that someone uh, was your friend or your ally, and then they betray you and they start to go against you and they become your enemy. They turn on you. So people are concerned that AIs will eventually turn on us and they will eventually want to destroy humans and they will go beyond what we want them to do and they will start to do things that uh, we didn't foresee and then they will turn on us and destroy us. 
by the way. The word foresee means that you envision something or imagine something in the future. You can predict it or imagine it uh, in the future. So that's one that a lot of people are afraid of. And uh, they've seen this in certain movies where robots take over the world. So that can be uh, a concern that some people have. I don't necessarily have this concern, but other people do. Uh, another concern is that uh, AI can be misused. Uh, when something is misused, uh, that means that it's used in the wrong way. So when I say it can be misused, really what I'm saying is that it can be used to do bad things, <laughs> things that are not uh, desirable for people. So if someone who has bad intentions uh, is able to use AI uh, to their advantage, who knows what they're capable of doing, right? Uh, that's a concerning thought to think that bad people can use this really powerful technology to do things uh, to hurt people, to uh, commit crimes, whatever. So that's uh, a legitimate concern that a lot of people have. And one of the biggest concerns, maybe the one that people talk about the most when it comes to AI, is they think that AI is going to take their job. AI is going to take a lot of our jobs. Uh, AI is going to replace humans. So this is definitely uh, something that people are afraid of, and it's going to happen. I think it's inevitable that many jobs will be replaced by AI. Many jobs have already been replaced by AI, I think. I think if uh, we talk about jobs that require uh, a low level of skills and don't require a lot of physical effort, these jobs uh, have uh, come under attack by AI. Uh, AI can easily replace humans in certain roles. So that's a legitimate concern that some people have as well. So we'll have to see how that plays out. When I say that something plays out, I'm saying, uh, let's see how it happens, how the events unfold, how it plays out. Okay. Another legitimate concern that people have regarding AI is the manipulation that can be done using AI. Uh, I'm referring to things like deep fakes. A deep fake is um, a piece of content, maybe a video, for example, uh, that looks like a person talking and it looks exactly like the real person and the voice sounds exactly like their real voice, but in reality, it's not a real video of that person talking. AI was used to uh, replicate that and make it look like this person is saying this thing or doing this thing, but in reality, it's fake. So you can imagine the type of problems that that can cause uh, when people are making deep fakes, right? So that's another concern. And one other concern is that uh, we will become too dependent on AI. We might forget how to do basic things and we might uh, not learn as well or um, be able to accomplish basic tasks as well anymore uh, because AI does everything for us. 
And that's something that uh, will most likely happen as time goes on. Uh, people will forget how to do things that uh, they don't need to do anymore. So uh, depending on the person, that might be concerning or maybe you're not concerned about that, but some people are. So that's another uh, possible risk or concern regarding AI. Now, let me uh, talk about a few examples of AI. So the first one that I want to talk about is chatbots. These are the uh, robot uh, chats that respond to your questions online. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before where you go on a website and uh, this chat box opens up and there's a bot, uh, a robot, right? Who asks you if you need help with something. And these chat bots can answer most of your routine questions and uh, they can uh, sound pretty human and they can be pretty useful of course, uh, some of them are getting more advanced and uh, are starting to seem more and more human now uh, to the point where maybe if someone uh, doesn't know what a chat bot is, they might just assume they're talking to a real person, right? So I'm sure this technology will continue to get uh, more and more uh, advanced and uh, will start to replace uh, any other type of human help that a company gives. Instead of having a person answer your questions, this chatbot uh, will do this uh, in a more efficient way and will be able to uh, give you that information faster and more accurately, and it will save time and save the company money. So that's uh, a job that AI uh, is now able to do pretty well. Not perfectly, uh, but it's getting there. It's uh, developing, and uh, it's becoming more efficient. The responses are fast, and uh, over time, uh, I think chatbots will become the norm for a lot of companies. Um, right now, I would say that I, as a consumer or a customer, I don't really like chatbots uh, at this point, and I think that they'll still need to improve more before I uh, use these chatbots. I don't use them mostly because uh, I find that they still lack uh, some things um, that a human has. Uh, when you lack something, this means that you don't have it. So uh, when I ask questions that are out of the ordinary, when they're more complex, uh, sometimes they can't really help me. So I don't really use these chatbots yet, but I'm sure that in a few years, um, I'll be able to use them and be satisfied with their responses. So that's one example of artificial intelligence. Another one, maybe the most popular one nowadays, is ChatGPT. I'm sure you've heard of this before. What is ChatGPT? Well, this is uh, a tool that can generate human-like responses to instructions that you give it. And it uh, takes in, it digests large quantities of text data, and then it infers relationships among these different words. When I say infer, uh, it's kind of like saying assume. So it assumes or it infers 
these different relationships um, among the different words to be able to analyze all of this and give you a proper response. And uh, its capability, its ability uh, to do this increases um, as the amount of data increases. So uh, that was kind of technical, but I think you get the point, right? Uh, it's this tool that's able to use data, use uh, all of this information, and very quickly and efficiently uh, make connections and analyze and create a response in a really uh, effective way. So uh, that's ChatGPT, and um, a lot of people are starting to use this. I haven't used it yet, to be honest, uh, but I've watched other people use it. Uh, some students of mine uh, use it, and we kind of um, look at it together during classes, and um, I've seen how it works, and eventually I'll use it, but I'm always pretty slow to adopt new technology, so uh, it'll take me a little while, but eventually I'm sure I'll start using it. And uh, how can we use ChatGPT uh, to our advantage? Well, if you don't like writing emails, then maybe ChatGPT can write emails for you. Uh, I know a lot of people do that. Uh, they use ChatGPT to respond to their emails. Um, for me, I don't think I would ever do this because uh, I am a writer and I'm very, very particular about uh, how I like my writing to sound. Of course, I'm not a perfect writer. Obviously, I make mistakes, and I don't always say things in the perfect way, um, but I am very particular about how I want things to sound, and so um, I don't really want a full email generated for me. I think it's better for me to write it and then to get some corrections and suggestions that works better for me. So uh, I don't think I'll ever use ChatGPT to just write all my emails, uh, but some people might do that. Uh, and so that's one use uh, of ChatGPT. Uh, another one uh, could be to uh, write blog posts. <laughs> if you want to have a blog and uh, you want ChatGPT to uh, write the whole post for you, you can do that. So you can create a lot of content now, uh, pretty creative content with ChatGPT, and it's making this type of content creation uh, more efficient, and uh, a lot of people are doing that now. Uh, I also had a student that was using ChatGPT to help them practice uh, preparing for an interview. So ChatGPT generated uh, scripts for different interview questions and answers, and we used that in our class to um, role play and practice uh, for the interview. When you role play, this means that you play a part and you imagine that you're in the real situation. You're role playing. And you can use ChatGPT to help in your coding if you're a programmer or uh, just to brainstorm in general. When you brainstorm, this means that you think and come up with ideas uh, about something. That's brainstorming. So if you need to do a project, but first you just want to think of different ideas, ChatGPT can help you brainstorm and do that. And in general, you can just learn things using ChatGPT. 
you can uh, ask it questions and learn more about things that you're curious about. And there are many, many other usages of ChatGPT, but I just wanted to mention a few. And one other example that I wanted to mention, uh, an example of AI, is self-driving cars. So we're already seeing this uh, nowadays. Self-driving cars are becoming uh, a thing now. And so one of the biggest benefits of cars that can drive themselves is that it reduces human-caused uh, accidents. So humans cause accidents all the time because we do things that we shouldn't do in the car. We make uh, movements and maneuvers that we shouldn't, and uh, this causes accidents. So self-driving cars can reduce that. They can make traffic flow more efficiently. They can make traffic uh, flow faster, and there won't be uh, as much traffic on the road. Uh, when the light turns green, all of the cars will just start advancing together if they're all self-driving, right? They won't have to wait for the car in front of them, uh, and then they start, and then the car behind them starts. No, it won't be like that, like it is when humans drive. All of the cars will just go at the same time. Things will be faster. The cars might be able to communicate with each other and uh, use that technology to um, coordinate with each other to make things better. So there are tons of benefits, but of course there are risks. These might be hacked, right? Someone might hack your uh, car and that would be a disaster if your machine got hacked and you're driving fast in it and you can imagine the consequences of that and of course the authorities the government or whoever might be able to take control over it and that's kind of a scary thing as well so of course there are some risks here some concerns that people have regarding self-driving cars but this is something that's definitely in progress right now we're seeing more and more of this all right that's it for today i hope this episode was interesting for you uh, remember that if you want to practice with real conversations then sign up for my u.s conversations podcast this will be really helpful for you if you need to reach that next level of listening where you can understand people when they're talking to each other this will be very helpful for you. So the link is in the description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. Or if you just want my advanced episodes where I talk fast, but just to the microphone, not another person, then make sure to become a listening time family member and you can practice with English spoken at real speed. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time.